You're not gonna bully me into thinking that a man should be wearing a dress. Why would I care about little commentators calling me homophobic or self-hating black person? I'm not any of those things. I'm anti-stupid. <laughs> and there's a lot of stupidity going on right now. I honestly want you to be pregnant again just so I could see you debate. <laughs> when your home is in order, you have everything. You feel safe. Yeah, you stood on your business, bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I lost respect for Jay-Z and gained more respect for Kanye. What do your prayers look like with you and God? <sighs> well... Yeah, yeah, that is a very personal question. If I got killed for speaking up for what I believe in, just nope, we're in heaven, we're celebrating. As a Christian, it bothers me that I allow the school system to inform my perspectives to not care about human beings. That's so powerful. I just want to take a second to say I absolutely agree with you. I'm just playing, I don't fight, I do not pray. I only go the way of Mr. Yahweh. It's not often I sit down with somebody and they say something that makes me think. Brother, this was great. I love you guys. Will you give me something to think about? My own damn way. I had a lot of fun on this interview. I'm excited. I am too. Thanks for coming down, by the way. Oh, thanks oh, for so having sweet. us. Yeah. And your whole team was unbelievable. I was like, they wanted us to shoot with your spot. And I was like, no, I, I want to shoot on mine. I feel like it would be too much like your <laughs> show. And I, I, I felt like it would be too home court advantage. You would interview us. And dude, they just blinked. <laughs> and then like everything was set up here. And I was like, I oh my God. That. <laughs> with the home court advantage. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on. We're so thrilled. Yeah, I haven't done this. I think I had anyone on my set since I did the Nelk Boys podcast. Oh. So this is the first time we've done this again. I love that. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I hope you enjoy just as much. Uh, you you remind me a lot of Andrew Tate. So when I did the interview with him, he said something that stuck with me forever. Now I can't unsee it. He says, in the eyes of God, you're either going to be a number or a name. And that's how war is. In war, you're either a number, like you're a soldier, mm -hmm. or you're a name, like you stand out. Like you did something. Even if they killed you, you still stood out and they know who you are. Mm -hmm. And watching your timeline, I've realized this about you regardless of where your heart is, you will be at the front center ready to fight for it. Mm. I want to take the time to learn from your POV because we, in this podcast, we do help people see from our point of views. And sometimes it gets scary because you learn. Mm. So like, ha have you ever just like been so certain on a thing and then like a 180 and now you have to fight the people that had your viewpoints before? Well, I mean, my story in politics is that I was a liberal and then I became a conservative. And it I, I would say when I was a liberal, by the way, to be clear, I was never voting Democrat. That's one of the biggest lies that the media always publishes. Like she was a Democrat. And then one day she realized she could make more money as a Republican, which is such a nonsense, given the fact that if I wanted to make money, I would have leaned into being a leftist. Yeah. The whole entire media loves the left. Yeah. I, would, right. I would have been on the cover of Vogue if yeah. I had said <laughs> black lives matter and here's why. Yep. Um, so I definitely did not take the easy route there. But, you know, I think that would probably be the biggest example of really having to fight was just the way in which the media attempted and still attempts. But I think a lot is their the black America's kind of waking up to it to turn black people against me which was, I wouldn't say hard. I would say it was very frustrating to realize that when people print things, people that read them just accept that it must therefore be true without mm. actually even watching a clip in its context, without actually, and this still happens to this day, like people just want the information. A journalist has a lot of power. Candace said this, and it's something that I've never said, and they just believe it. I, I was watching your, uh, your hearing when you were... Uh they used your words and they spun it and they made it seem like you were laughing at the mass shooter mm -hmm. that wrote you in his letter. And I just, wanna, I just wanna take that moment right there. So paint me the picture of you being a young black woman, being told what black people are going through by many white people around them. And then they're taking your words because they know everything's typed for the media. Mm -hmm. So they, they'll be able to quote it. They spin your words. They put it for you and they say, swallow this. You said this. How do you not lose your mind and say disrespectful things? You lose your temper. You, you get into, no, you just sat there and you, I could tell, you know what it looked like? It looked like you were angry, but you sinned not, which I really love that point of view. You were able to just, just dismantle them without any, any disrespectful tone. How long does it take a person to get to that capability? And how did you feel in that moment? You know, it's funny that you started talking about the analogy of war, because I would say that in moments like that, I am never more focused or more clear mm. when I realize that you're, I'm under attack, mm. right? And 
I think that's a part of adrenaline where adrenaline can be very clarifying. And I just saw red and I recognized what it was and I just pinpoint shot like a sniper. And I think that, yeah, it's the, the biggest part was just I was under attack and it wasn't fair, but I definitely didn't get to that point by any training. And I always tell people, wherever you wanna go in life, make sure that you're leaning towards what you're, who you naturally are. And I have very much been this way since I was a kid. Like my parents tell me stories all the time growing up that I was just kind of one of those precocious kids and they would constantly have to like close the door and laugh because of what I was saying. Like you just imagine like yeah. a you know, four year old reasoning with you, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you said this and da, 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 da. And so I think I've always been a person that pushes back against what I deem to be arbitrary authority. Like I didn't like when my mom used to say growing up, do this because I said so. Like that's something that I would instantly be pushing back at as a toddler, right? Because right. I'm just, what do you mean because you said so? That's not logical, I want yeah. an explanation. And I think that very much that is the media complex today. It's like, this is reality because I said so, yeah. which makes an enemy of, mm -hmm. of me. Yeah. Well, it's one of the reasons why I respect you so much is your ability to be so eloquent and well thought out. And you're able yeah. to make all your points. Like in that moment when you sat there, you were able to make, to take all the points that they were like saying and then make your case. And I just think that it's such a beautiful thing to watch and such a wonderful thing for a woman like you to show an example for other women and the like you truly are a role model for women to show that you can be strong in your point of views and make your points clear, but also be, you know, level headed. You didn't need to cause a scene or anything like that to make your point. Yeah, you stood on your business, bro. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the people are like, what does she mean by that? I say that, they're like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. And there was someone, like one of the judges, when you spoke, you know, he was for you. He he sat back and he was like. Yeah, he gave you your yeah. time. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> it was um, yeah, it was amazing. I want to I want to take a like a, a step back. When you were a liberal, um, why were you a liberal? Were you influenced by your surrounding or was it your parents that influenced you? What influenced you into making that decision? The entire ecosystem. I mean, the propaganda that we all grow up with. I'm so interested in what it takes to create a human mind, uh, what elements it takes to create a human mind. And I think obviously the biggest elements, you, you obviously brought up family. My family didn't care about politics. So they were apolitical, which always, which really just instigates how powerful any other influence was going to be because I was starting at a zero, yeah. right? Uh, and that's where they want you to that's be. That's where they want you to be. Yeah. It's great to be apolitical, right? Yeah, because you're not fighting against them. Exactly. And so then your ideas are likely going to be seeded from the education system. You get into school, you're there six hours a day. What are they telling you? Well, if you're a black American and you come out of school or if you're a white American and you come out of school, you have a viewpoint about slavery, about the Republican Party being racist and backwards, that Democrats rescued black people somehow, which is just so counter to what actual history is. It's almost stunning to I think about that. I thought Republicans did that. Yeah, Republicans did. But in the school system, you take away this idea. If you want to wonder why black people vote for droves and Democrats, it's because the textbooks make you think that LBJ, because he literally was the person who signed you know, the Civil Rights Act, but they don't, they don't contextualize that. They don't tell you that LBJ was an avowed racist. He was essentially forced to sign it because there were riots. He was angry about having to sign it and came up with a plan that he would, quote unquote, have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. And that plan was welfareism, the Great Society Act. You don't learn that. <laughs> you just yeah. A Democrat signed the Civil Rights Bill and you got all of your rights. It's very, here are the villains, here are the heroes. So they rewrote their story. They rewrote their story. Yeah. Um, genius. It is genius. Gen you you got to respect the move, right? My mom used to always say, think like a snake, be pure as a dove. Mm -hmm. So you got to know how deep they'll take it. And what they do is they'll beat the living crap out of you mentally, physically, emotionally. And then they'll say, we were the ones that took care of you. Right. And you'll be like, no. But if you say that many, many times in different variations, you'll somewhat be like, okay. It's kind of like when you're in a bad relationship, when somebody's like that you love will tell you the good things to confuse you, but his actions to everybody mm -hmm. else will be like, brother, that guy doesn't love you. So, okay. You said that you were going there because of your ecosystem. And I love watching your debates. I honestly want you to be pregnant again just so I could see you debate. <laughs> I, I, I truly, because like, dude, you're like, get over it. I, I have no time for this shit. And bro, like I would pause it and just die of laughter and send it to all of my friends. I go, she needs to consistently be pregnant. Because uh, you're just very straight to the point. But I have to play devil's advocate. When you see a, a young lady with you know blue hair and she has her signs and she's saying things that are just regurgitated from somebody else, 
do you not have empathy and see that you were that human being? That she's doing the same thing. She's standing at the front lines trying to defend what she feels needs defense. And you just shatter them where they stand. No, that's exactly what they need. They need a parent, right? That's, that's the problem. I was a liberal, but I was never that. Like, right, that, think about what those students are doing. This is an event they are not forced to attend. It is a ticketed event that's being held by Turning Point USA that is meant so that conservatives can finally hear their perspectives on these liberal totalitarian campuses that are just basically applauding Marxist principles all the time. You know, they rarely get to hear a conservative speak. So these people are choosing <laughs> to buy tickets to attend an event that they, that is, that someone that they hate is speaking at, right? Then they get in line and they stand up so they can say that they're a victim, that they have, that, that they're even standing at this debate, that I'm even there. Like, talk about victimizing yourself. You're, this is, this is completely ridiculous. And what's happened in this scenario is that we now live in a society where people don't believe in parenting. Yep. This, this is a weird thing where people now, you, you, went, you went from like, put them in timeout, went from like, you're going to get a spanking which is my generation, at least my household. I got my butt whooped yeah, growing be, up. Yeah, beat the brakes off your kids, bro. <laughs> beat the I told Bell, I told Bell, I said that. I go, listen, listen, listen. We ain't doing the American raising. My kids, I couldn't even get excited with my parents with a loud tone. If I was like, <laughs> mom, you wouldn't believe. She's like, who's, what are you mean, I was not like to clap or snap in the morning, okay? No clap or snap in the morning. You think I'd ever be able to go like this to my dad? My, oh my God, he'd disassemble me and put me back in his balls for like a couple more weeks. <laughs> Just until I format the way he wants me to talk. I'm like, but guess what? Like, you you don't spare the rod. I talked about this mm. in my last podcast. You don't spare the rod. The reason why the Bible says don't spare the rod is because if your parents are not going to discipline you, somebody else will mm -hmm. in their mindset. Exactly. So you were... Okay, so it's, it's now, absolutely bratty. It's an absurdity. You're, there's nothing yeah. here that you in victimized. You bought the ticket. You took that ticket, by the way, because my events are always sold out because conservatives are, are so desperate to hear people that represent their beliefs. You took that ticket and that seat away from somebody else so you could stand up here and say, what do you have to say about people that feel victimized by your presence? Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. that is just so infuriating to me. And it tells me directly what kind of a parent you had, mm -hmm. right? That you just can't mind your own business. And the reality is you're not victimized by my presence. You just need more attention. And you've been getting way too much attention for your every feeling. You've, you you look like a validated yeah. child, yeah. right? You've Spoiled. been validated. You've been affirmed mm -hmm. in your gender and in your ideas. You just didn't get slapped up across, like, across the head like I did when I was growing up for my mom. I mean, I got... I got whooped for things. I didn't even know what I got whooped for. Afterwards, I'm like, I'm not even really sure what I did there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but it made you rethink when you wanted to do something. Right. And I, so <laughs> I didn't have this privilege mentality of like, every time I have a feeling, everyone needs to listen to it. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're, so, pay, we're, we're paying for the the, uh, the trophies that are participating. Yes, or, the participation trophies. Or like trophies, the yeah. uh, everybody wins. When you remove the loser, everybody feels like a winner. So they act like losers while acting like winners. Mm -hmm. It's a weird, 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 weird concept. I think the pendulum is coming back, though. I think the children that are now feeling this are going to teach their children differently. Mm -hmm. um, but it's only people like you that are standing up and be like, none of this nonsense. Um, like I'm happy, by the way, just going back to your point about empathy because I want to make it. If she actually was saying something, you yeah. know what I mean? There and there are kids, and those don't go viral who will ask a question, like you know. And, and actually, one did. It was a young black woman, and she was saying, you know, what do you have to say about someone like me? I've listened to your points. I agree with some. I don't agree with some, but I am obviously. I, I think she said a part of the LGBTQ community, and we had a great back and forth because there was nothing bratty. She actually had a question. She wanted to hear right. what I had to say. But you're not going to take time away from this event and these kids that are here so that you can be seen and be heard. You're, you know, get out of my face and get out of this event and let people actually engage in this event in a meaningful way. Yeah. So, okay. I don't know how you were raised. Was, was your mom very heavy handed, but did she ever show like love and compassion to you? Yeah. I, I mean, I, my mom was heavy handed and if we were doing something wrong, we were very well behaved kids. Yeah. I mean, I had the kind of mom that would pinch us and like she would like whisper in our ear like yeah. if we even <laughs> piped up at a restaurant and you know, she'd be like when well, you know when you when we get home i'm gonna whip your ass do you ever get one of these <laughs> oh gosh the pinches the this right here if any uh, middle easterns they, no, they just tucked that. in real quick when they saw this this <laughs> that you don't even have to say anything she'll just see me from across the room like this and it's just <laughs> wait till we get home and i'm like oh man dude she's beat me up in church dog like i just like, get the look in the finger my mom yeah. liked to mm -hmm. to get down and i love when she put her finger in my face she didn't care where we were Mm -hmm. Like where we, yeah. we never threw fits. And if that never. little peep, it was on site, like right there. <laughs> Everyone would say like, we, we were the best behaved kids because of that. We were just, yeah. we understood that we needed to be well behaved or else we were going to get into trouble. So. It's your parent, you know, my, like my, sorry. Yeah. My mom always said, you know, like too many parents now are trying to be 
the friend and my mom always said she goes i'm not your friend mm -hmm. there will come a time when you know you're older and we build that friendship with each other in which i have that with my mom now but when you're a child you need an authority figure to tell you what's right as a child you don't know what's best for you mm -hmm. yeah also like i've like anyone who's seen me and my my mom and dad were best friends i even got a place right next to them because like i just can't stop being with after this i'm going straight to them like they are my kings and queens but I never lost that they're above me. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens is um, the government says your parents don't know shit, right? They were lied to. Mm. And then when you lose that respect for your parents, what they don't understand is that you'll start losing respect for yourself. Mm. Uh, and it trickles down. So how do we get... So we've tried the heavy handed, right? And I feel like it is waking up a lot of people, but how do we, how do, how is there a tactic that we could do it out of love? Like I, I, I'm, I haven't seen it online where we're like sitting down because when I see these people standing up and talking about, um, identity issues or, uh, their background issues or wherever their, their viewpoints are, I do like, I have so much empathy because I'm like, damn, I, you're broken mm -hmm. and you're lost and everybody keeps pushing you to the hell's fire and like no one's giving you any like real love. Like when you hit, I'll give you an example of friends. Like if you have friends that are always telling you, Candace, dude, you're killing it, bro. Like you're, the way you punch that little kid in the face, dog, he deserved it. You're like, no, no, no. You should probably tell him like, hey, dude, I love what you said, but you shouldn't punch that kid in the face. You have to have somebody give you the real shit. Like you shouldn't do that. And I feel like now because of the media, especially with the algorithm, they're only feeding things for your ego mm. and it's causing a separation. So mm. how do we teach them out of love because I feel like the, the, the separation is like us, like really never being able to see it from their point of view. Mm -hmm. I see. I, I disagree with that. I would have to say, I disagree with the premise. I don't think that it's not seeing things from their point of view. I think actually the entire world is bending down to see things from their point of view. Like we okay. can't even misgender someone on YouTube, seeing things from them part of view is being blared out cultural messaging, no matter how they feel, they have to be affirmed, right? Yeah. This, that is actually the culture. They're being affirmed in the classrooms. That's why they're bratty. Yeah. It's actually, we're suffering from too much love, yeah. too much coddling, Got you know, it. too much with their hand being held. So if, if, if the pendulum is going to swing back, it needs to be with more aggression in my view, right? If you're going to yeah. even that out, they need a moment that just smacks them in the face. And it's like, you're not that special. You're actually not that special. N nothing about your life to me is enviable. You are not going to use words to try to silence conversation by calling this homophobia. You know, there's so many different words. This is sexism, chauvinism, this is homophobia, feminism, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I, I, I very much disagree with the premise that these people need love. I think it's, what's been happening is that they have the wrong idea of what love is. And in my view, love is discipline. Love is discipline. I think it's, it's important because you want people to do well in life. And so the people that are affirming them, like you just said, yeah. are setting them down a path of absolute failure. This is why these kids end up, they come out of college, they have a useless degree in gender studies, and they're, <laughs> they don't even know who, who to be angry at when they can't get a job. And so they blame the white man, the rich man, the tall man. You know, it's, it's because of racial prejudice. It's because women can't get, it's, no, it's because literally you have done nothing of value in your life. Nothing in value at all, yeah. right? The world lied to you, the teachers lied to you, your mom lied to you, your dad lied to you. So I'm just gonna stand up here and be the truth. And Great counterpoint, honestly, yeah. that was an amazing <clears throat> counterpoint. I, I, I now agree with you because you're right, from seeing it from that point of view, like my, I always just want to not offend because- Stop it, that. It, it's, it's, it's hard because like I, I try to mimic Christ, right? Christ always offended, but he never wanted to offend them. He just said it's the not, truth. I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The truth is offensive yeah, now, right? Yeah. You're a man. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Yeah. Like, uh, no, I'm wearing a dress. You know what I'm saying? That, like, literally, got, the truth is now considered offense. That was our first tie together. Uh, Logan uh, asked me on, on, on Impulsive. He goes, Harry Styles is wearing a dress. He goes, isn't that manly? And this is, I, <laughs> I was on the podcast for maybe like a week or two. Like, I'm very new to the podcast. <laughs> so I just go, manly? I'm like, I don't think that's manly at all. And I, I made jokes. I go, when you go to a department, you don't go, I really want a nice dress. And they go, yeah, it's in the men's department. They go in the women's department. I got reamed for that. But mm. me and you tied in because you said the same thing. And I said, who's that? Like that. Because I was like, yeah, who is that? Who's saying that? And you tweeted 
figured out you're like, tell your friend who's uh, irrelevant that I'm with so-and-so. And I was like, no, 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 we're on the same side. Like, I, I was on your side. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'll, I'll apologize to her later about that. So I wanted to apologize. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. It was me. It was it, me. No, it was, it was another person that was next to him. Oh, you were talking about Mike? Mike? Yeah. This whole yeah, time. Yeah. This bro. whole time she was talking about you and she was talking about Mike? Yes, bro. Yeah, because he said, so I remember watching this clip and he didn't just say like, oh, who's that in a dress? He said it was, it was actually regarding BLM. And he was on his like pro BLM pitch, Paul, uh, Logan, Logan Paul. And he basically was saying that my perspectives on it, I don't know what he was saying, but essentially he was very pro BLM and they were trying to say that I was deranged for being a black person who held a different viewpoint. And yeah, I was, I tweeted like, what are you even talking about here? And I was like, I don't know, know who your friend is. For years, I'm walking <laughs> yeah. around be like, don't, don't, don't get out of bounds, bro. No, it wasn't Don't you. get out of bounds. No. So this is my point of view, right? I don't think it's manly if a man wears a dress. Now, if a man came up to me and is like, I think it's manly to wear a dress, I would say, okay. I, wouldn't, I don't need to argue with it. So I don't understand that. The, like a lot of people want to stand up for what they believe in. But as soon as I speak about what I believe in, it's wrong. Yeah, because they're lying. It's Valentine's Day. And so I feel romantic. And I wrote a poem for you guys. You want to hear it? Roses are red. Violets are blue. Trim your balls. And your date will thank us too. What's up, fellas? Valentine's Day is around the corner. Manscaped got the remedy that the love doctor ordered. His prescription? Let me tell you. It's the new performance package 5.0 Ultra. Designed to elevate your grooming game and shine like the little heartthrob you are. A little personal experience about Manscaped to me. One, I could not believe how excellent it is at not cutting. The sensitive guy, man. Nothing's worse than going on a date and then trying to stretch and pretend like you're not trying to move your boxes around your balls because you're chafing. You don't want that, bro. You want to focus on the girl that you have right in front of you. So do yourself a favor. Get Manscaped and stop playing games with your balls, bro. That ain't something you play with. Well, I mean, well, you know what I mean. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With our exclusive offer, go to manscaped.com and snag yourself 20% off plus free shipping. Use the code GEORGE. But I just don't get so, that. How do we get to a friendly argument? Like, how do I get to somebody that has these viewpoints and be like, dude, I get it. You think that wearing a dress on a cover of a magazine or or these men acting like women and in and, and movies and, and uh, I, Cat Williams was talking about this. Everybody has their own points of views. But I've never in my life ever heard somebody else's point of views and got so upset mm -hmm. that I was like, no, they need to see it from my point of view. I think that's what makes the world beautiful, bro. Even the people that I truly don't even agree with, it's... At least we could get on a common ground and be like, yo, I don't agree with you, but could you at least respect my my mm -hmm. opinion? Actually, you know, if we had that, if we had an agreement that, you know, if we were respectful in that way, I feel like then the school system wouldn't be so messed up the way that it is because then we would respect the fact that there are two sides and mm -hmm. one side wouldn't only be taught, right? Mm -hmm. Both sides would be taught and then the students would be able to make their decision as to where they want to go. Right. But that's not the case, right? Well, the uh, reason that people get upset, just to kind of answer your question of why that is, you only get upset when you're lying, Right. The lie hates hearing the truth, always. So if you say something that is so obviously a lie, that a man dressing up as a woman is manly, you're going to be upset when someone says, no, that's obviously not manly. <laughs> that's not an example of masculinity to cosplay as a woman. Yeah. And so they then turn into... Marxists, they then turn into George Orwell's 1984 and they're like, I have to force you to not believe your own eyes, right? And they get tremendously defensive because they've been exposed as a liar, right? Not because these are two different ideas, right? It's not like when you're not lying and you're like, oh, I really like, I think the, the white couch looks better to the left. Oh, really? I think the, the, the couch looks better to the right. It's a difference in opinion, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're outright lying, it comes with anger and it comes with defensiveness. So in that moment, which I didn't see, if Logan Paul is literally saying something that is so absurd and so untrue, if he actually thought that wearing a dress was manly, he would do it. I say, dude, 100%, you should do it. You should yeah. wear a dress tomorrow. That's what I would have said. You should wear, you should wear a dress tomorrow. You don't want to do that. Do you, do oh, I don't, was he going to say, I don't want to be manly? Is he going to say that? I don't want to be manly? No, because he knows, he knew, I think some of his ideas have shifted over the years because those lies are no longer serving him as he's getting more into boxing and MMA and, and that's like stuff that is just, you know, it's weak. It would be cool if he admitted now, which I'm totally fine for people to transform over the years, I, I think he probably kowtowed to leftist pressure when he took the BLM stance and took all of the Marxist stances going on. But you want to be a man? 
F the dress, apologize for lying, right? Because people listen to you, right? And when you say stuff like that, when men lie, it renders them weaker. Men should never lie. It's better to say nothing than to allow a lie to come from your lips. Amen. I believe that. Yeah. I, I, dude, the, the, the thing that I don't like is when you lie, to me, you're an empty vessel. Because if you can't stand on your word, then what are, who are you as a human being? Yeah. Over-exaggerating to tell a story or a joke, totally fine. But like for you to stand on your business, but you know your business isn't legitimate, mm. that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, taking it away from that, how did you resurface? Like, w w was it like a educational? Like, how did, how did you in your environment get out, right? Because if your environment is all this type of situation, how do you guide somebody that's in your footsteps out of the ecosystem to educate themselves in the proper way? Yeah, I started reading books, not the textbooks that were handed to me, not the assigned readings. It was just a moment that made me really curious. And it was, you know, because I very much liked culture. I knew, obviously, that Donald Trump was very well loved in culture before he ever ran for pre president. It was sort of a symbol of success. If you listen to rap songs or music, it, you know, uh, even Beyonce and Jay-Z, sipping poolside at Mar-a-Lago, you know, he was the symbol of success in black America. So it was very strange to me when he ran and I wasn't going to vote for him when he came on the escalator and then suddenly the media was saying he was a racist and that he was gonna put black people back in chains. I mean, the rhetoric was insane. It, and so that just piqued my curiosity where I was like, okay, if this was the truth, didn't you guys just have give him a show for, for decades? This guy has been on TV, he's been in our face. Why are you just telling us now that these are his perspectives? Why did you ever platform him? So that was just too obvious of a switch up. And I had, just being curious, watched him give a live speech in Dimondale, Michigan, where he was talking about black America and he was basically, the pitch was, look at your communities, look at the rates of whatever's going on in your communities. Why don't you just try something new? Take a chance on me, right? The Democrats obviously haven't done anything for you. Just take a chance on me. And I remember watching it and thinking, all right, cool, cool enough pitch. Like I wasn't gonna vote for him still, but I was like, that's a solid pitch. Just try something different. It piqued your curiosity. Yeah, and then I watched the media report on that speech in real time, the way that they lied. He faked tears from like black uh, Don Lemon type people on TV. Wow. He's looking at black and people in the face and he's saying, you're poor, your communities are this, like he's a racist. And that moment just changed everything Shattered. for me. I just wow. I realized this is full on propaganda. So that was your turning point was Donald, you investigating in Donald Trump's ideas? Yeah, that was the wake up moment for me that, you know, the media really is just actually evil really it's, it's bought it's it's bought it's paid for these people are actors suddenly i, I was really able to recognize th the performance of it all mm. the fake tears the, oh my god the rhetoric and i was honestly it was very hard to go through i always say that i, I suffered a bit after because it was like having your whole world turned upside down like to realize you were ones. so wrong like you have to go through a death of an ego right because what yeah. if you were yeah. like i'm not talking to you because you're a racist and blah 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 because blah, you believe the media hype but it just, it kind of shattered my world as I knew it. And I decided to kind of quietly for a year, just do some studying. And, you know, I, I really dove into Thomas Sowell, which he made the economic ar arguments. He never was left or right per se, but he definitely is a free market capitalist. And he made very sound economic arguments of how could I ever accept anything the Democrats are doing. Um, and yeah, I just kind of went down a dark hole of, of reading so much Thomas Sowell, Shelby Steele, because I wanted to start with the Uncle Toms and the Coons, the people that I instantly thought were Uncle Toms and Coons because they were black and conservative. And, you know, joke's on me. Now that's the stuff that I'm, I get called. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy wow. to go from fighting against them to aligning yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you were kind of, you know, like dying to your old self in a sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like for that year, you like left yourself behind? Yeah, I went through like, I would say shock, and then I was educated, and then I was angry at how evil, to realize what the Democrats have done to black America, how they have used the school system, how they have encouraged us to burn down our own neighborhoods via Marxist principles, and causing people to flee our neighborhoods after BLM, which I spoke out against the entire time. I was really angry, because I realized it's just a modern slave plantation. You're doing all the same stuff. You're breaking down our families. You are making sure that we aren't educated. I mean, the percentage of black boys and girls that can read in America right now, shocking, right? And you've largely got a, gotten away with it. And then that empowered me to say, I want to be a voice and speak out against it. 
How do you feel about your culture and what they do with music? I think it's a part of it. It's it's a part, and I've talked about this on my show, who owns these record label companies? Who signs a sexy red? You you can go out and you can buy, you can get any artist in the world based on their talent. Why when you, why is that when you come to black America, you want to platform someone like Sexy Red when it used to be you platform people like Lauren Hill? This is intentional. This is intentional because, you know, as Confucius said, Chinese philosopher said that, you know, what is in your ears will eventually be what surrounds you, right? Music mm -hmm. is music yeah. is very powerful. Yeah. Uh, I heard a saying that uh, uh, music doesn't need an invitation to your soul. Mm -mm. That's a great way of saying it. Into it. Yeah, and it he, he, in. you are who you you are who you hang out with. But if you're just listening to it all the time, mm -hmm. and I, I always got confused, I could never have said it because I'm not black. But if I had an Assyrian culture, and all they did was make money off of belittling my people, mm. I would not pay money for it. I'd be like, yo, what are you doing? You switch sides on us. Like, why would you make it out, quote, and then shit where you came from? Well, why don't you come grab us and like bail us out? Do you ever get scared of speaking the way you speak? No, no. I feel very comfortable speaking the way I speak because I'm team God, right? So <laughs> yeah, if God has you, who can be against you? You know what I mean? Amen. And so yeah, I, I am very confident in what I say, and I take, obviously, a beating from the artists who I believe, just like you said, have turned their back on black America, because I don't fault these artists. Like, I grew up listening to Jay-Z. I would say Jay-Z and Kanye probably had the biggest influence on me, and there's a lot in Jay-Z's music that I'm so grateful for, because he made it clear on how to move in a business room, I would say. Yeah. So many of his lyrics talking about, you know, this is how I think about it when they want me to do their shows. Like, how are they benefiting off of me, my brand? He's thinking like a boss. But then he gets up on stage and he, him and his wife tell people to vote for Hillary Clinton. I know Jay-Z is smart enough to know that's wrong. I know he's smart enough to know that's wrong because I listened to the DNA of his music. So if you got out, why don't you tell other people how to get out? And that's when I lost respect for Jay-Z and it is what made me gain more respect for Kanye because he is willing to say stuff that makes him unfavorable in Hollywood, where I think Jay-Z really cares about what Hollywood thinks about him. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Jay-Z, unbelievably talented, can't deny it. Beyonce, unbelievably Absolutely. talented, can't deny it. Kanye West, I would say a genius, mm -hmm. can't deny it. Unfortunately, you stood on someone who is very up and down with what he says. Mm -hmm. Does that not like if I had a teammate that just kept going back and forth, it kind of it's kind of hard to like stand out. And like, let me give you an example. Uh, my mom and dad would come up to me. and They'd be like, hey, if you're voting for Trump, don't talk about that. And I was like, damn, we got to a place where it's hard to even voice what you're v voting for, or what you're siding with. And then I realized that my mom was trying to teach me a lesson. Be careful on who you speak stamp your name on mm -hmm. because now how they act or how they portray themselves or any of that is going to reflect you because mm -hmm. people are going to be like, well, you signed off on this man. Mm -hmm. So how do you sign off on a man who stands on a car and says, yo, Jesus is coming. You got to be about good things, all this stuff. But then, uh, I'm a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck the mm -hmm. next day. Mm -hmm. You could see when Kanye has his eyes on Christ and then you could see it when he's like, oh, I need to get these numbers up or stuff like that. So I think the single most important thing that Kanye has told about himself publicly, which weighs into my mind when he makes music like that, is that he's addicted to pornography. He's talked about that. It's a huge societal ill. Like, it's not something that men normally talk about, like being addicted to pornography, being addicted to sex, talking about how he, you know, he felt like he was introduced to pornography too early, right? And so when, in my view, I think that is an addiction in the battle that lives with him, you know, and has come out in his music at certain times. I can't listen to that music. I do not listen to that music. I do not. I, doesn't that make it worse it, if you don't it, mind me asking? No, like, but I'm very honest about the fact that I don't listen to pornographic lyrics. No, 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 not you. <laughs> but like, I, so I can't listen it's to pornographic lyrics. Come on, really Candace, what are you doing? And it's funny because I, I, it means that I've really raised my frequency because I can't hear it. It makes me cringe. I used to listen to it when I was young. It didn't impact me. But right? now you woke up but and now you're now like, that I've woken I can up, hear the programming. And I've well, realized the how important it is, what you put into your ears. I quite literally cannot listen to that 
that kind of music. It just, it, it does something to my soul. But mm -hmm. so my question is now that you know that, mm -hmm. how old are you? If you don't let me ask, you're young enough for me to ask that. 34. You, 34. you can always ask me. I'm, I don't live okay. by that rule. If I'm, if I'm 65, I'll be like, I'm 65. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so you're 34 years old, mm -hmm. but uh, you seem to be like, uh, from my POV of just me and you, but seems like if you learn it, I got it, move on. Mm -hmm. So how could you work alongside somebody who, just said, hey, I'm addicted to pornography. It mm. ruined my marriage. It that's, ruined. that's brave. But then he goes back to teaching kids to do that shit. That's how addiction works, right? So for but me, it's different. but I'm not, it's if, different if I was if you're promoting, sitting in the studio for hours, you no, know no, no. I mean? that's listen, like days listen. of work. This is a conversation you got to have with Kanye. I don't listen to that music. <laughs> I don't promote that music. And, and if I'm standing next to Kanye for something that he is saying and being honest about, I am co-signing what he is saying and doing. Got so it. when he put on the MAGA hat, it was a very significant moment for black America. Huge. You do not have to vote Democrat. He lost a right? lot of fans. He lost that. so many fans for saying that. But he gained too, so that's good. Right. And so that that never been done. You never could have seen that. Rappers just know, even if they're saying it privately that they like Trump, they would have never, ever, ever said that and been honest about that until Kanye took all of the bullets for being like, you have another option, black America. And I commend that bravery. Got it. Right. If I was sitting next to him or in that video then you could talk to me about that. Yeah. Candace, do you accept? No, I don't like that kind of music at all. So but you're that good at picking not, and choosing what? Well, yeah, and, and not, I mean, do you know his music? His, the, the majority of his, like when, when we're talking about, you know, all the way from his early or early days all through now, like, yes, he has a lot of, especially on this recent album, He there's one song that's really great, but I can't listen to it because the lyrics are too pornographic. Um, for me, personally, yeah. Carnival is, is just way too pornographic. People can take that if, if they want to, but on on me, in terms of what I talk about on my platform, I'm not going to promote, you know, pornography. I tell people that what you put in your ears is what you will put in your heart. But I also know that if I was me when I was 15, I wouldn't be listening to Candace at 34 because I was listening to that music, you know? Mm, got it. So, yeah. yeah. People are people are, are complicated. They're absolutely complicated, but I can't be meant to answer for <laughs> Kanye's addictions, Kanye's afflictions, Kanye's convictions, because I'm not, I'm not yay. Got it. You know? Hold the phone. <laughs> You're not yay? I'm not yay. I'm sorry. No, this no. interview is not going to go as viral as anticipated, because I am not yay. <laughs> just, just, no, honestly, it's, 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 we're getting out what we need. Can I get my Celsius over there? I don't want to just get, You're oh, right. perfect. Thanks. Is this, a, is this a smooth ad plug right there? Yeah, uh, can I get a uh, Celsius? Yeah. Oh, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> can somebody get me a Celsius? Do you want one? No, I'm good. Okay. I've actually never had one. Really? really? Yeah. Is that like all the biz? Like, yeah. is that like my... would you taste it right? Oh, they're not cold. But would you taste it right? We yeah, get I would. a cup of, of ice. It's, it's not that... it's not alcohol, right? I don't drink. No, no, no. no, no, no it's no, just no. caffeine. Okay. Hey, could you grab a cup of ice that's in the room right next door to we know this whole area by now? Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, we live here now. Kind of detouring from that. So okay, so circling back, you were liberal, got educated, read books, saw Trump, realized that the media is manipulating his words, woke up, died to yourself had to recreate who you are to teach people to not walk in the same footsteps that you did. What is the hardest part of standing up for what you believe in? And how could somebody like, because we're, okay, I don't want to be sexist when I say this, but I feel like it's very hard for a black female to go out and speak passionately without so many critics speaking on her. How did you beat this? Who, who are you looking up to? Who, who, what philosophy were you picking from? I always say to people, I'm just my granddaddy's girl. You know, my granddad was just, and he was not political at all, super conservative, believed in discipline, was extremely faithful. We had to read the Bible um, every morning. He would make us a big Southern breakfast and we had to read Bible verses. And it's beautiful. He just, I'm very much like him. And grand, my granddad was so, he, he passed away two years ago, uh, three years ago now, so but sorry. he was just very stubborn, you know? Like, you were never going to come to granddad and tell him about his family and tell him about his life, you know? And I think that there was just a genetic component where for me, once I know well, this is how I'm living, this is what I believe to be true, you're not going to bully me into some BS. You're not going to bully me into thinking that a man should be wearing a dress. It's, it's, it's so absurd and so ridiculous. Why would I care? Why would I care about little commentators calling me homophobic or calling me sexist or a self-hating black person or anti-Semitic? You can't tell me those things because they're simply not true. I'm not any of those things. I'm anti-stupid. <laughs> and there's a lot of stupidity going on right now, Five, right? Yeah. Love that. And yeah, so I've, it doesn't impact me. And then I became 10 times stronger 
uh, when I got married and I had kids. I've never been more secure in who I am and who I am not than when I made the decision to start a family. Has motherhood changed you in any way when it comes to your, the way you speak? No, it's actually fortified me more. And I was looking forward to, I think it was Ali Stuckey. I really like her. She, she has a podcast called Relatable. And I think after she gave birth, no, it might have been Lila Rose, actually. And she was talking about how motherhood, you know, softened her. You know, because you start seeing people as their kids and they were saying, I really hope AOC actually has kids because it will change her. And I was looking forward to when I was pregnant, I'm going to be softened and like <laughs> communicate with more passion, compassion. And actually it hardened me. <laughs> well, yeah. more mama Get me bear. Ben Shapiro now. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. now you want to protect them and you're the like, mama bear, mama bear yeah. vibes before you even have that. Right. No, but question, did you uh, ever think about your children before they even existed? Oh yeah. Do how we do that all the time. Yeah. I feel like everything we do, they'll look up to that. Mm -hmm. I, I told I, I'll say this, because like I, I, I don't care, but it's scary, but I'm gonna mention it. But I always tell her, I go, if I die, never, ever, ever be sad. Because if I got killed for speaking up for what I believe in, just know we're in we're in heaven, we're mm -hmm. celebrating. Mm -hmm. So I always act as if God forbid we get to a point in the world where my life is in jeopardy. And the only things my kids have to raise them with is the tapes that I speak on. So I really put everything into this. Like if I'm, God forbid, like this is how I'm going to raise my kids. Mm. And so I, every move I make is like, hey, be careful. Your kid's going to see that. And I feel like people should think this way because it's taken me out of a lot of stupid like decisions. Because when you're thinking, oh, it's just me, I'm young. Then you're like, oh, I don't care. But if you're like, no, I got to make sure that my mom's not embarrassed and my kids are not going to be embarrassed. Mm. It, it really, it fear, it, you could use it for a good thing. Yeah. Well, that's a great point, question. And I don't, and I, I'm really not trying to drag them at all, but that is a very, I think, powerful statement because think about that. So Logan's going to get married, right? His kids will see what he said. Would you stand on that to your son that it's manly to go out and wear a dress? Would you be like, yeah, I'm so proud of you. Go out the door and wear a dress as a man. You know, these are the things that you have to think about. You're right. That's why it's so important to tell the truth. And for me, when I, before I had children, yeah, I, I dreamed of what kind of parent I wanted to be. And then when I had children, the mama bear came out. And for people that don't know, we don't just use that phrase, you know, oh, mama bear. It's actually, it's a phenomenon what actually happens in the wild and in nature with a mother bear. So the papa bear, if you will, uh, when they want to have sex with the mama bear, they can't if she is, she doesn't go into heat if she's nursing. That's a thing that's a, all, all mammals. If you're nursing, you don't go into no, heat. No, I deal with it all the time. Right? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so what happens is he realizes if I kill the cubs, right, you'll go back into heat so we can have sex. Right? No, they don't do that. This is 100% true. This is 100% true. 100% true. Wait, that's crazy. So Yo, they'll they start. they really want to so smash. They, right? So they <laughs> really. That's crazy. <laughs> Papa Bear's wild, right? Whoa. So now on, that's my nickname, girl. So they'll attack the cubs and try to kill the cubs. And the mama bear will fight to her death. You got to see the footage. Go, oh, on for sex? go look on YouTube of what she will do for her kids, right? And many times wins, right? Or he goes off or whatever because it unlocks. It's like, you're about to kill my cubs? Mm. That's what the mama bear, I just wanted to state that so people know you can go on the internet and look at what I'm saying to you is true. It's wild. It's, it's incredible. That was unlocked in me when I realized the poison pill mm. that we are giving children in society because we have a lot of weak men and, uh, and therefore, and we have a lot of, actually, I wouldn't say weak men. What we're living in right now isn't a patriarchy. It's a matriarchy, right? We have a lot of weak men and a bunch of women who are able to manipulate these men into silence or manipulate them to say things that aren't true. And they're running the school systems. Women are running the school systems. We're just, it's just full pollution. And it, it made me like stronger and more fortified. And I'm just going to keep saying the truth and keep saying Amen. the truth, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, as, you kids, should, yeah. as you should, as you should. What flavor would you like, by the way? Oh, I think they got me. Oh, shoot, I'm going to try this. This is great. We have uh, a mango too. passion Which fruit one? or tropical vibe? I'm a tropical vibe. My, my, from my family's from St. Thomas. Okay. Yeah, so oh. some of my family's from St. Thomas. My grandma was from St. Thomas. Yeah, yeah, so this feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. Tropical Like vibes. this will fit Heart with guns. you. <laughs> yeah. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and so now with your husband, do you feel like when you met him, where, where were you at in your career when you met your husband? And do you feel like he had any influence over your points of views and your growth? He, in my growth, absolutely. Every day in marriage, you know, I am, I, I am blessed that I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world. No mm -hmm. offense. Great name. He is, yeah, great name. <laughs> Only name sexy too. men can be named George. 
<laughs> I'll tell my son that it's named after. <laughs> Let's, dude, I'm trying to get her to yeah. name it. George, she, he, she won't. It yeah, was did. George the Third. Come yeah. on, how hard is that? I love that? it. I like George the Third. George Janko the Third. Bro, I, if you if you say it loud enough, all bears get heated up. You don't even need to kill the you don't even need to kill the cubs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, please continue. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, that's that like, yeah, so I got married to my husband and we from the day that we laid eyes on each other, it took us 18 days to get engaged. I was about to say really? it's quick, right? Two weeks. Crazy story. Yeah, totally crazy story. God thing without question. Wow. Um, and the way that it's changed me is my husband is incredibly faithful. It also, like I said, added to just my security. It's like there's nothing the world can do mm. that's going to impact this, right? So mm. that there's constantly this threat when you're on your own. Uh, that we can pull this and your life will be over, your life will be canceled. When your family, when your home is in order, mm -hmm. you have everything. You feel safe. Yeah. It's the you foundation have of life. You ha you, I mean, there's nothing that can happen that you can take from me yep. because we have everything. Amen. And I pray that yeah. goes only stronger and it builds mm -hmm. and your bloodline gets stronger. And there's just a bunch of OCs just running around, just <laughs> screaming at people, being like, you're a liar. And so uh, how does he quick? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know if this is, this is supporting, is it, I think they're a sponsor because they've got some Celsius here, but I'm going to try it. So if you are a sponsor and it's bad, unfortunately, I always tell the truth. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It this goes from that really to like a bad. different question. Right, <laughs> Just right, right. If this randomly gets cut, it's because I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. This is, what's the flavor? Tropical, tropical vibe. Tropical vibe. So it's like a yeah pineapple. And it's an energy thing. It's mm -hmm. it's gonna get you going for the oh, gym. Oh okay. Yeah. A lot yeah. of vitamins. This is actually good. Let's go. Whoa! I'll admit. Yeah, it's actually good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're, okay. They're so it yummy. gives you energy. So this is a better solution than Red Bull. Oh dude. Oh. I gotta stop with Red Bull. I don't drink it a lot. Do, do you drink the yellow one? But when I was pregnant with my son, I drank a lot of Red Bull. It was no, no, weird. no. You did it. You did. did. No, you did it. But the kid's hyper. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, because that's what you had the most. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> just randomly, he's going to be like, yeah. And you're <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Wait, that's actually great. Wait, that is actually really wild yeah. when you think about it. The fact that you drank a lot of Red Bull and he's super hyper. Mm -hmm. Because usually women, when they're pregnant, whatever they eat the most, that ends up being the kid's like favorite food. And they're all hyper. Wow. That's yeah. so funny. They're all hyper. Doesn't Celsius matter went from like watching her like it to talking about Red Bull. They're like, bro, come on, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, but like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to drink. I didn't want to drink this. Replace so this is a that great. That's what I'm saying. This tastes is. better, there way better, yeah, way better for and you. Definitely, a, nice. Red Bull's nice. obviously bad. That's real, you know? right there. Yeah, she tells the truth. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So now that now you're in mama bear mode, what's the next yeah. five to ten years? Are you going to be running for office? Everyone says that. I don't want to run from office. I hate Washington, D.C. Wait, but in 2021. Washington, D.C. to the ground. I mean, if I saw somebody that I thought was super inspiring and they wanted me to come in, I would probably do it. I loved Vivek Ramaswamy. I really did. And he is, like, when I say, if anybody can listen to me and just recognize that we will never, probably in our lifetime, have a candidate, somebody who wants to go to D.C., with his brain power. I mean, yeah. he's not just smart. Anybody can be academic and smart. Anybody can pass the test with enough studying. He is genius. Mm -hmm. He's genius. And his desire to learn, I mean, it, he's just built differently. Like I said this on, I think, my podcast. It's sometimes things happen in the womb and things just go really wrong. And sometimes things happen in the womb and things just go really <laughs> right. Dude is a mutant. You know yeah. what I mean? No, he's like amazing. he's an X-Men. We actually I mean, just had him last week. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he said, I actually wanted to bring this up. He said that we are not as divided as the media wants us to believe. Do you agree with this? Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. Do you I think, think all these rallies are like fake? Because did Which you ever rallies? watch, I, mind you, this is a conspiracy thought, but with, with the whole Joe Biden um, meetups, I, I saw that there were like nobody there. Yeah, nobody was ever there. Yeah, it was just, they wouldn't even announce where he was going. It was bizarre. Remember the car honking during the COVID stuff? Did you know all the cars were the same cars? They were all like Jeeps or something like that. I oh, forgot, I but they were all that. the same brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, sadly, Joe Biden is dead, right? I mean, he's just mentally incapacitated. Oh my God, time. I thought she was gonna about to drop some shit. I'm like, girl, you are yay. You are yay right now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's dead. He's like, that's actually not even him. It's a fact, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's just like- So I, you're just saying it, the, he's, the light's on, no one's home. Yeah. yeah. Got it, yeah. got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> I liked your reaction, though. You seemed very upset that you lost the president. You Bro, thought he was really dead. But hold up. Don't make me a terrorist. I dealt with that when 9-11 happened and everybody looked at me weird. I, I, I just, I respect every, and actually on the Vivek episode, I said I respect him. I can always respect a man who wants to roll up his sleeve and get to work. Yeah. I can't, I, I think it would be, it would be dishonorable for me to be like, F that guy when who the hell am I? A guy who talks on a podcast. So for me to just be like, he's not, 
I don't think he's suitable to be running this country. I don't think that's disrespectful. That's just my point of view. If you have to walk the man off the stage, don't think he should run the country. Right. You get what I'm saying? And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean I would rather know that the other countries are looking at us in a very strong situation. When Donald Trump was in office, regardless how you felt about him, the other countries had their own feelings about him. They're mm -hmm. like, we're not going to push this guy. This guy will push us right back. Right. So th we need that. Right. And and I think, I, I'm not sure if rumors are true, but I think I recently heard that Putin said he preferred to have Biden. Of course, if you're a country and, and your competition is America, mm -hmm. wouldn't you prefer to have Biden leading that country? Because you just, there's, there's no fear there. You just, how do you feel I, about Putin? I thought his interview was unbelievable what Tucker did in that interview because talk about showing us the contrast of what it looks like to have an intelligent leader there's nobody that can not admit that Putin is extremely intelligent oh yeah and well-rounded and then just recognizing how much the culture has dumbed down Americans that there are people who were like the first hour was boring uh, was boring this is how much ADHD you have right yeah. that you can't even listen he started in the eighth century Russia. I mean, that was, that's just incredible. You know, going through every century and talking about what was happening in that region. Americans are fundamentally ignorant when it comes to history. And we are propagandized into believing that we understand things and we don't. And mm -hmm. so I use that opportunity to really make Americans aw aware of what was happening in that region and why I'm so uncomfortable with what Zelensky is doing. It's giving me Bolshevik vibes. And there's something very evil happening right now in Ukraine, right in front of our faces. And the reason why America is allowed to be used as a bank, really, for these wars is because Americans don't know anything. We know very, after 9-11, I think about it now, the propaganda to make me afraid of Muslims. I can't even imagine being a Muslim growing up after 9-11 in America, because I know how I felt about them. And I was, I was young, I was 11 years old. But that beating every day in our heads that every Muslim was a terrorist was the idea that you got. I make jokes about it, but like, you don't understand. Like, I had to shave my face to go to the airports. My mom would make me shave my face. Yeah. Like, at school, like, I was so young. I, <laughs> this is actually funny. I had a, a mustache in like the fourth grade, and my mom made me nair it because she was like, you got it. Like, because it was really, really bad. Because whatever you're like, the household would say the kids have no filter. Mm -hmm. So they would just say whatever they wanted to me. But at a young age, I realized that I myself as a Middle Eastern was racist too. I was like, oh, it's not us, it's them. Mm -hmm. And so I would point my finger out of fear and be like, no, no, they did it. But then I went to, um, uh, what country did I just go to? Sorry, um, Canada? I went to Saudi Arabia and I don't think I've ever been to a country that was more hospitable to me. Mm -hmm. the, the love that I got, the respect that I got, I literally sat back and I hung myself out to dry on a podcast. I go, wow, I was brainwashed. I was so scared. I didn't bring her. Yeah, I, yeah same. And, and so first I want to say just like, to all Muslims growing up during that time in America, I am sorry on behalf of America yeah, I'm sorry for the too. way that you were treated. That it, it is so unacceptable. When I go back and I re-examine that propaganda, that brainwashing that took place in the classroom to make me scared of something, I didn't even know what a Muslim was. I remember going to the airport and someone was a Hindu and I was scared of it. I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna make him take this off of his head, blah, blah, blah. I thought that was a Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. There was no education about anything. And the reason for that, you know, he who controls the textbooks controls the entire country in my view, right? It was because everything that we did responding to 9-11 should be assessed as whether or not they were crimes against humanity. We bombed a million Iraqi civilians. We yeah. killed a million Iraqi civilians. Yeah. What were we doing in Iraq? The I Saudis were on the plane. That, yeah. They just said there's weapons of mass destruction. And then they never found them. But they, in the process, they killed a million Iraqi civilians, right? Yeah, and we, it made us think it's okay to just keep bombing Muslims. That, that was the purpose to me of that educational propaganda and brainwashing is that we we feel nothing for muslims if they die and that's right. and that's so wrong as a they, christian they it anger. bothers me mm. as a christian it bothers me that i allowed the school system to inform my perspectives to not care about human beings yeah there there was a that's so powerful that that, that i just want to take a second to say i absolutely agree with you that is very powerful uh but painting your civilians or your citizens mind Let's face it, television is war. Tell a vision. What vision are you telling your mm. citizen? So when they are weekly programming, every time it's a weekly program, they're programming you to think of a certain thing. This is not new though, right? This is a tactic that's been since Jesus Christ. Like the, the king or whoever will be like, they're evil because this and this and that. You would think social media would kind of open each other's eyes to be like, oh wait, hold on, like, 
they're not that bad. They're actually in America. It's a mixing pot, which means they're coming from other countries. You think they would be educated. Mm -hmm. um, how do we get our country to not be divided? Actually, properly get educated, and I think this is the this is the reason that they hate alternative media sources like me. You know, if you say any, they hate podcasting. You want to figure out how to control this, right? Yeah. Because suddenly their narrative is threatened, and I think that we are in the midst of a mass awakening. I would say to any person that's watching this is to know that anytime you are thinking in your head that these are always the good guys, and you're referring to an entire re religion, you know, an entire class of people. All women are this. All men are that. All all Muslims are this. All Jews are this. You're being you're being programmed. You, you have been programmed. Human beings are more complex. Um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn is a, a person who was in the labor camps during, during the communist regime, and he came out and he wrote extensively about what they suffered. By the way, no one ever talks about the Christian Holocaust, 20 million Christians killed in Russia. And uh, he, he was writing about it, and he says, everybody's capable, and I'm butchering this quote, we should find the direct quote because it's so powerful, that everybody is capable of good and evil, right? And he, he says the reason why it's not so easy to just go after evil and conquer it or go after you know good and, and, and put it up on a platform is because at any moment, good pe can become evil and evil can become good. And I have seen that in this industry. And so people who throw things at me, like, why would you talk to Andrew Tate? And look at what he said you know, 20 years ago or 10 years ago, whatever, because I sense in him somebody that is capable of, good. I see this transition happening, right? And he, I have nothing to do with this platform. Dude was the eighth most Googled person. <laughs> you know, he's obviously relevant, whether you like him or not, he is very relevant and he's relevant because there is this spiritual emptiness inside of boys. They've been hit over their head over and over again and said, don't be a guy, don't be a guy, don't be a boy. Toxic masculinity, the, the toxic feminists have created this narrative that being a man is wrong. And in yeah. many ways, that being a woman is wrong too. You should want to climb the corporate ladder. Why do you want to be home with kids? Neither thing is okay. And so when Andrew Tate, I understand it. When Andrew Tate got up and was like, no, you can be a man, F her. F her, do this, blah, 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 blah. These girls are all hoes. They responded, right? right? Like, goodness, finally we can hear something else outside of this conditioning that we're hearing that men are awful and backwards the entire time. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, you have to constantly reassess. You have to constantly reassess people that are surround you. Are they still a good person? I know that you were a good person two years ago. I've seen people in politics that still have platforms that I'm like, I don't know if you're a good person anymore. I don't think you're a good person. Just because you were a good person five years ago doesn't mean you're a good person now, you know? Uh, has money corrupted you? Has your own wants corrupted you? Has power corrupted you? Everything corrupts. So yeah. constantly take measure of the people that you're listening to and ask yourself if you think they are good people. You know? if, if you could restructure DC, because I know you don't like DC. If you could restructure it, like for example, with Vivek, I said, I don't think lobbying should even be a 100th thing. first thing I was going to say. Okay. I, like to me, that's bribery at a whole different level. And, and all of our politicians have been bribed. They yeah. all have been bribed, one way or the other. So that's the first thing that would go. Well, what else would you change? Like, what, what, if you if term one limits go with that permits term limits term because limits. the promise is the the issue is if you can just be in DC forever, right? Then you want to figure out how to enrich DC. This is your job now, right? How do I make my company, so to speak, uh, more successful? Which is why you go to you accept the lobbyists' bribes because it's a lot of money coming from big pharma. It's a lot of money off being offered to you from the military industrial complex. That's what happened to Nikki Haley. She was in debt, right? And then suddenly she recognized that she could make a lot of money if she just promoted the military industrial complex. We have to go to war all the time. War, 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 war. You see Lindsey Graham, he's a n total nut job. You know, bomb Iran. The heck is wrong with you? Why are you saying that? Do you, do you think you're representing the interests of the American people? Yeah. But what if, you're, what if you had term limits and you had to go back and be the American people? What if it's your children? Yeah. What if you were only here for four years and then for the rest of the time, you got to be like us. Well, then suddenly bomb Iran and let's go to war doesn't really, doesn't really serve you. So the term limits should be established. They, lobbying should not be accepted whatsoever. No bribes should be allowed. Yeah. Going to D.C. should be an act of service because you're not going to make a lot of money, right? But you, you want to change your country. You actually want to make it a better country. Right now, no, they want to be celebrities. It's, it's like a, it's a Hollywood. Right. I, was, I told Vivek, I said the only thing, like I, I, I like to challenge my guests because I don't want to sit here and just kiss ass. And the one thing I challenge them on, I go, um, when I watched your guys' panel, I go, it was, a, it was a comedy roast. If that's our leaders tearing each other down, what the hell are we doing? We're going to follow in your guys' footsteps. You guys are the people that we're teaching our kids to support mm -hmm. and learn from. I also think they should have to pass a civics test. 
because there's a lot of really not smart people that are in D.C. I don't think they even know how their government works. They just get a platform because they're saying what people want to hear. It doesn't even make sense to me. I mean, this was something that Vivek was talking about on the road, was saying that every single person should have to pass a civics test to even vote. And that was considered very controversial. And it's like, wow, that's how dumb we've gotten. I mean, go back and read the letters that were written from 17-year-olds that were fighting in the Civil War to their moms. Geniuses. They sounded like poets. Yeah. And geniuses. No schooling, no university. Now read anything that's written by somebody who's allegedly a journalist. Like I was reading today the Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone um, cover issue because I was covering it on my show. It's like Kristen Stewart. The first sentence is such an insult to just the English language. It's just an assault on the English language. <laughs> like I was, how are you able to write for a magazine? How did you get this job, right? <laughs> and so now we're at the place where we're like, oh my God, no, if I have to know how many states there are and I can't vote, like then that's not fair. Well, no, if you don't know how many states there are, Educate if you can't yourself, answer basic, right. then you shouldn't be voting because you could actually be voting us into harm. <laughs> That's so funny. Too many people in speaking on subjects that they <laughs> yeah, don't know right. about. If you yeah, don't know I'm, about I'm, it, I'm too dumb it. to do this, but I'm definitely smart enough to vote doesn't really make sense to me. I want to be a doctor and do surgery, but I don't want to go to school. Right. Are you going to open me up? Right. Especially another thing, if you don't pay taxes, it's wild to me that you would be allowed to vote. If you don't pay taxes and you're and you're just fully just on the tit, so to speak, why on earth are you able to vote on how I'm going to get taxed? Like this doesn't make any sense to me, right? Like yeah. you're not a participating member of society if you're uh, not voting, if you're not if you're not being taxed. Have you been in LA? You've got no skin in the game. Um, I, yeah, I've been to LA many, many times. Have you ever lived in LA? No, I would never live in LA. Um, wh what are your thoughts on homelessness? Do you live in LA? I used to, I go back and forth. I come for work, so I have a place in mm -hmm. LA where I come and shoot and do stuff. But I mostly reside in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. My thoughts on homelessness is that people are really uneducated. They believe this narrative that a homeless person is just somebody that's down on their luck and just needs a place to stay. Yeah. The overwhelming majority of them are drug addicts and they had places to stay and ruined their entire lives because they, if you gave them $200, told them to go feed themselves, they would go to the corner and they would buy crack. These people are extremely dangerous, right? This whole concept of the poor, sad, homeless person, and that the way you're going to help them is by giving them more money to spend Coddling is them. completely foolish and ridiculous. Like again, we need to tell the truth about why we have yeah. these people that are on the streets. They're getting free stuff. Barry, There's no, and they don't, they don't care. They're happy to live on the streets. They tell you they this. They got iPhones. They can do their drugs for free. You now I've got clinics where they can shoot up for free. Their life is great. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, for them, this is the daddy warbuck lifestyle. Yeah, and then you're told, oh, we just need more money to fix the issue and to give them more money. And, and the money doesn't go to them. No. And a lot of people would be like, that's not very Christ-like of you. No, 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 no. It is. It's a sin to walk that type of life. Mm -hmm. Go it, Like, I didn't realize this until I went to other countries and I looked around None. And I asked my neighbor there, I go, hey, you guys have no homelessness. He goes, it's illegal. If you're homeless, you'll go straight to prison. So it pushes them to go get a job. And the reason why I want to push this is because when, you, when you're just given something, you, you, okay, let me give an example. This is a perfect example. I, there's this guy that I know, he came from a, a very wealthy family, drug addict. Yeah, of course. Threw away his life. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I go, what the heck is wrong with you, bro? God has blessed you mm -hmm. with such a fruitful life and you throw it all away. And he says, you'll never understand what it feels like to never need to work for anything. I actually fully subscribe to rich kid probs. They're real. They're real. They're real. I feel bad for rich kids. It's, it's, because I'm like, wow, like I get that. Like you never had to work for learn. Something. You never had to work. And it's something that I am so conscious of with my children because I'm from a school of hard knocks. I had nothing. I had no money. I had over six, you know, six figures in debt just trying to get to university because I felt the peer pressure to go, which is a joke. You do not have to go to university and get a degree. That is just already putting you into the banking system because you start your life already debt, owing money. Yeah. Yeah. And in debt. It's, that's another evil uh, in our society. But I think about this all the time, uh, that they are, in a sense, handicapped by their own parents. Mm -hmm. I saw, I was friends with a girl and we, I had to bust my butt. I mean, I've had a job since I was 14 years old. I've never not had a job, you know, and I have slept in my car. I've had $9 in my bank account. I remember crying on the phone with Sally Mae when they wouldn't stop calling me over student loans. And they were like, you know, they just call back to back, you know, it's totally mentally, they're just in you. Yeah. And they're just like, you're going to default on the loan. You're going to have a local credit store. You're not going to be able to live. We're going to take your first kid. And I just remember being on the phone, talking to this woman being like, what? I literally have $9 in my bank account. What would you like me to do? Yeah. Right. And I thank God for those moments, especially in the retrospect. In fact, 
Thanking God in the retrospect is why I never doubt him now when I'm suffering, no matter what's going through, is because the lesson of my life when I was a liberal and I fell away from the faith and I was embarrassed about my grandfather's and my grandmother's faithfulness and I fell into the world and worldliness and the secular habits, I was miserable and I was angry at God. I was like, why me? Why couldn't I come from a rich family? You know, why couldn't I, you know, have money? Why can't you make things easy? It turns you into a little Marxist, right? And then when I started going back to where I, from where I started, you know, where what my grandfather's lessons were, what actually wealth is, because it isn't money, you know, it's it's family, it's security, it's clear thinking, it's there were so many blessings in my life, and now I realize, oh my gosh, I, it's it sounds ridiculous to say this, God's a genius, right? It sounds so ridiculous and patronizing to say God is a genius, but every single place that He put me, every bit of suffering. Now, when I speak, I speak on authority, you right? Praise it. Yeah, I'm like, you are just so smart, God. You're a genius. <laughs> oh, I hate to say it's so patronizing to you, but mm, you know it. You know. And now, when I can't make sense of things that are happening, when I, I'm like, why is this happening it. to me? Mass shootings, types of I'm like, I don't know what you're doing, God, but I know that you have me. Mm-hmm. I know that you're not putting me through the suffering. I will, I will understand your perfect design and your plan yep. later on. Yep. And I don't, I I don't doubt him. I don't I doubt him anymore. Mindset. I also want to, I want to uh, uh, note with that because you could be very, very rich or very, very poor. Your God doesn't look at dirt and question your surroundings. Okay. Whatever you're thinking is valuable to Him was created by dust. So to Him, it's literally dust. Where you're at in your life, if you're uncomfortable, if you're mad, if you're upset, listen to what you're asking God for and realize that he's putting you through what you're praying for. So if you want to be great, know that you have to go through things that will make you great. Mm. You have that obstacle. When you were like, I want to be a leading woman, I want to teach these people how to get out of it, and God's like, all right, man, but look how many obstacles I'm going to have to put you through because you need to mentally prepare yourself. I can't just give it to you. Mm -hmm. The best thing that God could give you is wisdom. And Mm -hmm. if you ask anybody who's wise, how do you get wisdom? It's really by absorbing what you're going through, everything. Even if you feel like you're at rock bottom, uh, Examine it. Mm-hmm. Like really, really see how am I here? Why am I here? And now when God pulls me out, how can I tell my brothers and sisters to get out of there? Mm-hmm. Really open up your eyes and fear nothing but the Lord. Mm-hmm. If you fear nothing but the Lord, then everything else is just literally a game. Life is a game mm-hmm. and you're just building up. Very, very proud of you. Yeah, God, he's, he's very intentional. God is so intentional. And yeah, your suffering is intentional. You have to suffer. You have to go through suffering in life. That That is a teaching moment for you. And when you make it through suffering, you will be so much stronger. And I think that because I was forged in the fire, a lot of this stuff just seems so ridiculous to me. When people are like, how do you deal with all the mean comments? I'm like, what a blessing. <laughs> My grandfather had to get up when he was five, five years old and lay tobacco to dry on a sharecropping farm. I'm his granddaughter and I got to deal with mean tweets on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spoiled. They're, they're, spoiled. They're, they're misspelled too. They're yeah, even like, I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, my life is so hard. I'm like, everyone's like, are you so happy? I'm like, because my life is wonderful. That, if that's what I, that's the pain I have to go through is a, a me, an optional mean tweet. I don't have to be on Twitter. You know what I mean? Right. Who cares? Dude, you, you yeah, fix your, your focus. Your perspective is perfect. Mm-hmm. How do you get somebody to have your perspective, right? Because they could be in the trenches, but if you have your perspective right, it's paradise. How do you get, how did you, like, how do, how would you, okay, the perfect question. Your children are now being raised by their surrounding. You're older. What's your advice to a young, is it a boy or a girl, if you don't mind me asking? My children? Yeah, I have the, three. Two boys and a girl. So the, the is the new one a girl? Boy. A boy. Mm-hmm. Boy, so, girl, boy. Congratulations. So, thank you. Congratulations. The, the boy is about to turn 18. The world is telling him it's wrong to be a man. Mm. But you're teaching him. If you had to tell that young man, this is what you need to gear yourself for the, for the war of life, mm-hmm. what would you gear him with? That's actually a question that I get often when I'm on college campuses and I tell them exactly what I just said is, you know, when people tell me they're going through something hard, I always ask them, what did your granddad do? What did your granddad do for a living? What did your, what did your grand, what did his father do for a living? And to hear them talk about, to realize what the time of men, because that's yeah. what it was. It was the time of men. Men yeah. had to be men. Yeah. Um, and, and someone will say, oh, he fought in World War II, whatever it is. And I, I, I just try to change their perspective, right? Your life is great. Your life is, my goodness, the technology. Even when I think about little things, the convenience of technology, but even with raising kids, how unbelievably spoiled we all are, right? 
the problem is, is people aren't given that perspective. They yeah. actually think that their suffering is true suffering or true hardship. And what's amazing is that the people that lived through what I would say was true suffering and true hardship don't have that perspective. They don't mm -hmm. complain. No, they never complain. Because they don't play so your victim, problem, they play victor. Right. So nice. the problem is like, that actually is a direct quote from me that was taken from Turning Point. Really? Yeah. I swear Wait, what I just said. Everyone, yeah. My mom no. says, no, my yeah. mom has said that. <laughs> no. no, I swear to you. My mom has said that my whole life because she, my mom's had an absolute wild life, you know, and we had our own tribulations when I was younger and she would always look at me and she's like, in life, so you could either be a victim or you could be a victor. You choose what you want. Wow, to be. I love that. And that's because nothing is original under the sun. Of course, your mom. Yeah. Any, <laughs> but I think that's amazing. How dare yeah. you yeah. steal from her mother? No way. I know. <laughs> We're gonna let her mom mint that. Yeah. But that's that is the right perspective to have. And it's like actually the best thing to teach them is like you're just not a victim. You have it so easy compared to how this person had it, and that's why it's so important. And this is what the problem. The reason why the children of rich people tend to become Marxists. And oh, it's because they want to rinse themselves of the guilt of their wealth. It's because they had no suffering. They don't know about how their parents made that wealth. They don't know about where it came from. It's too easy, mm -hmm. right? They don't know that when you go back, somebody suffered for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody was suffering to create that. And then unfortunately that person, whoever that person was, didn't do the right thing and raise you right and make you understand what they went through to achieve that success. And so it is incumbent upon parents mm -hmm. that are successful to make sure that you don't, that you raise your children with the right perspective. And even if you are a parent and you are not successful to, or, you know, and you're, and you're, you think that, oh, well, I'm not, I, we're not making enough money. No, I actually find people with the best values come from homes where they don't have it all. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Preach because yeah. their perspectives are better. You have to work for it. And I think most of the time when somebody tells you something, you're not ready to hear it. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to take in what the person is telling you. But when it comes back to you having to deal with the problems at hand, those are the tools that are building you up mm -hmm. to be the woman that you are the same way that you got built up to be the woman that you are. Yeah. And so, yeah, they, they, they need those experiences, mm -hmm. you know? I, I truly, is it, from our perspective, right? Belle had a different upbringing than I had. She had more of a turbulence. I... Like a silver spoon is like degrading to what I had. Like I had everything. If I even pumped fake looked at something, I'd have it. Like <laughs> I had everything my eyes ever had. My dad would literally spoil me to a degree where I tell her stories and I start feeling guilty. I'm like, all right, man, like maybe I should like not talk about my life. <laughs> like, and like people think I'm exaggerating, but my life was unbelievable, right? But how did I become the mindset that I have? My mom and dad focused on two things. Most importantly, God. I ain't nothing without God. They're nothing without God. And then two, they changed my focus into never wanting, but being grateful. Mm. So always, always working for it. I'll give you an example. If I was in music, if I wanted a microphone that was expensive, my dad wouldn't shorten it because he worked hard in his life, but he would make me perform in front of him and his friends for like fucking days, freaking days, <laughs> sorry, for freaking days, bro. It's an embarrassing. And he'd be like, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you believe in the song. Get out of here. And I'm like, oh my God. So I realized that it has nothing to do with your wealth. It has nothing to do with you being poor. How are your parents raising you? It's mm -hmm. everything about that. The reason why poor parents probably raise their kids better because they're probably around them more mm -hmm. and they're teaching them. I don't want you to have this life forever. I want you to know this and this and that. And then rich parents are like, you don't even have to worry about it here. Have this. Mm -hmm. And you have no idea how bad you just poisoned your bloodline. Right. I totally agree. And victim mentality will always be a cancer in your life. Like mm -hmm. no matter what you go through, just find a way to think about it and go, what a blessing. This is a blessing because, begin the sentence that way. This is actually a blessing because, you know, I recently had a thing and I was like, this is a blessing because da 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 da. And I'm good about it. And everyone's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry. It's cool. It's cool. Like, this is actually great because of this. Mm -hmm. And you will see how much it changes you as a person. It changes how people respond around you. People love to be a victim. I don't get it. It's weird. It's, you know, the trauma dumping on the internet. And yeah, it works. People cry on the internet. They're oversharing about things in their life. You know, I was just diagnosed with a bad pinky, whatever. Um, and <laughs> then they Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I and I am so sorry for those people. I am so sorry. This is what you have to resort to for attention. I am so sorry that your life is so void, right? That you don't realize that you are tremendously blessed in every single way. And that the message that we should be sharing with people is that no matter what suffering you believe that you are going through, it is without a question, a gift that has been hand picked for you by God. Like he is at the gift shop in heaven and he's like, let me get this gift. I know it's wrapped up in a curse. You're like, oh my God, how do you do this? But let me tell you something. It's a gift. Right. The, uh, the first thing I ever said on Impulsive was, well, my mom taught me and I'll re-say it right here. It says, my mom used to tell me, uh, 
the devil is never powerful enough. The devil could never take what God has installed in you, mm. but he could blind you from where it takes you. Every tool that he uses is a lie. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's just a lie. He can never touch you. He can never affect you, but he can get you to give up what God gave to you. Mm -hmm. And so if you have something in your heart, if, you're, if you have a skill set, if you're an artist, if you're in any way, shape, or form, you feel you're built a certain way, give it to God and watch it just blossom. Mm -hmm. my, my final question for you before you get going, you have to go shoot and all your stuff is, uh, what is your and you, could, you don't have to get too personal, but I, I, this is a question I really would love to know. What do your prayers look like with you and God? Well, yeah, it, that is a very personal question. Um, you don't have to dive into like no, all no, the no, details. No, 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 I mean, like, I, I will be honest. I, you know, when my husband and I pray together, it is just about first and foremost, we just have a ton of people that we name that we ask him to, you know, inter, intercede in the path of their lives. You know, like this is... Pray, we pray for this person, this person, this person, this person. So the majority of the prayer, I would say, is just praying for other people. I Believe it or not, we pray for our enemies. No, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and I mean it to people when I'm like, I, I genuinely wish you well. I, like, I mean, because where you are at right now is such a dark place. If you can do these sorts of things that, like, I can't even really be mad at you. I just have to, I have to feel bad for, like, where you're at because I'm not there. And then it is just giving thanks and without question, I always ask him for strength to continue doing his will in the world is probably, that's a, that's a direct thing that I say in all of my prayers, you know? You know, thank you for the continued strength to, to keep doing your will in the world, you know? Amen. I, I, I just, it was in my heart, it was like the first thing I wrote down that I wanted to know and, and I will say why, it's because when I look at you, I see a, a like legit soldier that got put here purposefully and I really do mean that. I don't just butter up my guests. If I feel like I truly need a rebuke or influence, I'll do that. But when I, when I sat with you, I really do feel like we're just taking away. You've been in the war a lot longer than us. So I just wanted to learn from your perspective. And uh, honestly, I pray that n none of your ego or anger, any emotions that the devil wants you to use is mm -hmm. ever used. And I just pray that not only you, but your bloodline is multiplied and there's a lot of blessings that come your way. I really do. I really pray for that. Well, I just want to thank everybody watching because I think people always come up to me and they say, I pray for you. And that is the only thing I ever ask people to do. If you ever want to help me, just pray because obviously the prayers have been working and God has given me the platform that I have today. And it is obviously a platform that I'm grateful to have, but it wouldn't be here without the people, you know, that invest in me by watching a video, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Like everything that I have is because... God gave me the strength and people believed in me. And so I will, I will always be honest with them, no matter where it lands, wherever, no matter what fire someone I have to go through, yeah. I just don't lie for a living, you know? You're Amen. such a beautiful soul. Thank you. You yeah. guys are so sweet. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so we'll much. Have, we'll have to do it again. I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Where are you guys, Bert? Uh, I'll let you guys wrap, but where are you guys based? We, we travel around. So we're, we're usually based in LA and then uh, uh, Arizona. Okay. And the, but for our podcast, uh, we we're just, I don't know. I think I we learned. Travel a lot. Yeah, we That's I learned great. from Impulsive because Logan would be so busy, he would travel a lot for his work, and I was like, "Whoa, this is actually genius." I'm not gonna wait for my guests to come to me. I'm gonna show them that I want to be there. So great. Yeah, you'll find success. And we were actually just talking about this like two days ago, yeah. talking about how like not a lot of people do that for their podcast, and mm -hmm. it's it's such a different experience to come to the person, and it's a lot of fun. You know, yeah. you get to experience we get to see their, their hometown and stuff. So yeah. it's cool. Yeah, Nashville's lit. Yeah, great yeah. food, bro. I'm gonna walk around. Everybody's <laughs> so positive. They're just a bunch of positive people. Look at this guy smiling. Back. I can see his and all the hotels of country music, which I love country yeah. music. So I love being in like hey, Tennessee she or has Texas. To go. You know? Come on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So. I'm so sorry. That's an ad for Nashville. <laughs> Visit Nashville. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see thank you guys you. next time.